in this segment we will very briefly look at uh, the design of high frequency inductors and transformers. Now, this can be a large topic by itself, but uh, we will just look at, uh, uh, look at, we will discuss this in a very simple manner. Uh, so, the basic of magnetic design is how to pick the peak flux density B max and how to pick this current density J max. So, a lot of the discussion that goes on in designing these uh, uh, magnetic components really uh, depends on uh, how intelligently to select this uh, B max and J max. Uh, so, let us look at uh, in a very general term uh, an inductor and a transformer. Inductor on the left and uh, a transformer with uh, secondary windings on the outside, let us say at, uh, at lower voltage and therefore high currents and then the primary winding uh, on the inside here. So, we have uh, this uh, window area uh, in both cases and uh, we also have uh, for each conductor, we have this uh, conductor area and uh, this cross sectional area of the core to through which the flux will pass. So, uh, in designing these uh, inductors and uh, transformers, uh, one of the ways uh, is uh, called area product method. So, this area product method, uh, to use that, uh, we will first uh, uh, calculate the window area. And uh, as you can see, that uh, this uh, win window area here uh, is equal to uh, uh, this uh, number of turns for uh, any winding, uh, let us say uh, winding Y, which is uh, NY, and the cross sectional area, which is given by the uh, this, exp this uh, variable A conductor for that winding Y, and we will integrate over Y number of windings. And if you divide this by uh, this KW here, so that is uh, equal to uh, KW is the window fill factor. We cannot fill this window completely, so this factor may be, you know, somewhere in the range of 0.4 of 0.5, so that gives us the required window area. And then uh, in a, uh, this uh, conductor cross-sectional area depends upon the RMS current that uh, this winding Y has to carry and J max. And we will assume this uh, current density to be max, the same maximum current density to be true in all windings, okay. So, you can see here that uh, uh, if you substitute for this uh, conductor cross sectional area over here, the window area required is given by this expression over here. So, now what is the, and the, uh, so now we come to the co core cross sectional area, how much should be that? And that, as you can appreciate, is the maximum flux that we need, uh, or this circuit would have, and divide by whatever we select as the maximum flux density here. So, for an inductor, the maximum uh, flux would be L times the peak current uh, divided by the number of turns in that inductor. And therefore, substituting this for peak flux, the core cross-sectional area required is given by this here. Now, in a transformer, it depends upon what kind of a converter circuit this transformer is connected in. So, let us say that uh, this, uh, the waveform for the voltage that appears on one of the windings, let us say winding 1. So, the voltage that appears on uh, across winding 1 is shown like this over here. So, as uh, from this, you can appreciate that uh, the peak flux that will, that this uh, transformer would see, let us say it starts with 0 and uh, so this peak flux here would be based on the volt seconds that we apply. So, that uh, volt seconds would be equal to in this case, this uh, voltage here, this, this time period T sub S and the frequency, uh, this time period is equal to uh, uh, our frequency is equal to 1 over the time period, uh, switching time period over here, 
and depending upon the, the nature of this uh, voltage waveform, we have this factor, let's call it K converter. It depends upon the, uh, the converter in which this transform is connected. So it's basically it's uh, V1 times this uh, factor divided by Fs. They give us the, the volt seconds that is being applied where the flux is uh, starting from let's say zero and going to some peak value over here. So we get this expression here. And uh, therefore, uh, just picking uh, one of the, uh, the windings in this uh, transformer, let's say winding Y, uh, we can write this core cross-sectional area uh, from uh, using this equation here. So put in the peak flux for winding Y divided by B max, we get this expression over here. Okay. So now uh, let's multiply uh, this uh, core cross-sectional area and the window cross-sectional area. So uh, we can see that this so-called uh, area product for an inductor would look like this. And it is equal to the inductance that we want and uh, the peak current, the RMS value of that current that will flow through this inductor. And in the denominator, we have the window fill factor, uh, J max and B max. Now for the transformer, uh, we get this expression here uh, in terms of uh, the sum of uh, 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 volt amperes. And, uh, and this is based on the fact that, uh, you know, V1 over N1 is equal to V2 over N2 uh, from Faraday's law. So uh, once we have calculated this uh, area product, we can go to uh, core catalogs and uh, core manufacturers very carefully list uh, these uh, area products. So we pick uh, a core that meets the area product that is needed in designing this, uh, these structures. And uh, once we have picked that core, uh, you know, of course it gives this area product, but it also gives the cross-sectional area and also the, uh, so it gives the cross-sectional area of that core as well. So uh, once we have that, uh, you know, once we have picked that core, you can calculate the number of turns. Let's say you're designing an inductor. You can calculate the number of turns based on the inductance that we need, the peak current that is specified uh, for which we are designing this inductor, divided by B max that we have selected, and the, the, the cross-sectional area of this core that we have picked. So once we have that, uh, we have the number of turns, then the, in, the inductance, this is missing here, that uh, the, the inductance that we desire is equal to uh, this n squared divided by the, the reluctance offered to flux path. And that reluctance uh, would be basically due to, let's say, an air gap that we cut in the flux path. If it's uh, core with a distributed air gap, that's something different. But let's say that we need to put some air gap in the flux path, then we need to decide what this reluctance ought to be based on the inductance that we are looking for. So this uh, reluctance uh, is equal to uh, the, <clears throat> and assuming that uh, perhaps all the reluctance is offered by this air gap that we cut in this core not by the magnetic structure. So this is equal to length of the air gap uh, divided by the air gap permeability and the core cross-sectional area over here. So from here, you can see that if you combine these two equations where you substitute for R sub G from here, uh, we can calculate what the length of this air gap that we need to introduce in this structure uh, and uh, we have already calculated the number of turns. Uh, a core comes from the uh, core that we have picked of a desired, with a desired area product uh, and uh, the inductance that we want. And similarly, we can, uh, for a transformer, uh, calculate the number of turns that each winding should have. Uh, let's say winding Y here, based on the core cross-sectional area that this core has and all the parameters we know need, uh, we already have been specified. Uh, in doing so, we have totally ignored the thermal considerations. 
and uh, they can play a very big part. So this is uh, just a, a first cut, this EA product method, but a uh, lot more uh, considerations uh, need to be given uh, before the design is optimized. So this brings us to the end of the segment where we have, uh, you know, in a very s simplified manner, uh, looked at the design of uh, high frequency frequency inductors and transformers using this area product method.